let us start lecture 9 and the course is corrosion protection methods and today's topic will be the remaining guidelines what we have to discuss for better design and that can prevent corrosion to a great extent. So, the course is Now, we talked about total 6 guidelines and there are few guidelines which will be covered in today's lecture. The point number 7 it says avoid hot spot. So, this is particularly important in heat exchanger where during heat transfer process there could be a possibility of local increase in temperature and that can also lead to several other problems like oxidation, local oxidation, local thermal fatigue those kind of stuff can happen. So, this is important in case of heat exchanger. Where heat transfer happens from hot gas to cold gas or hot gas to cold liquid. Now, there because of this local increase in temperature which is the hot spot, there could be excessive oxygen, uh, oxi excessive oxidation there could be thermal fatigue. there could be thinning down of the segment that metallic segment of that pipeline and then bulging. And finally, they could lead to a particular failure called fish mouth failure. So, if this is the pipeline, so there could be failure like this, okay. there could be blast in that local spots and that would lead to a catastrophic failure in the surrounding pipelines also. Now, one possible reason that we can discuss here, so if you see the heat exchanger chamber so, let us say this is my chamber. So, this is refractory line chamber. And there will be a small hole through which hot gases are coming out. And if somebody wants to recover that heat basically if we do not recover that heat from the hot gases, it will go to the atmosphere. This is happening in the secondary heat exchanger in chemical plant. So, if you recover that heat from the hot gases, you can use make use of that particular heat for other preheating purpose. Now, in that chamber you have a lined of tubes like this. So, those tubes are lined up and hot gases are going like this and there will be exit hot gases that cold gases are coming out and these tubes if you consider this a tube
this is a tube and uh, outside we have hot gas and this is entry point mainly if we use steam which is a which is cold steam and then when it goes out exit point it is hot steam and this hot steam can be used up for some other important purpose and this is the flow of hot gases. Now, if we look at a small segment of it, let us say this is the segment we are talking about. If we look at the design of it, so that means, so this is the wall thickness of the tube. and this is the inner wall and outer wall and through which steam is flowing. And by chance that hot steam is getting obstructed because of some sub eventualities there. So, that obstruction can lead to a turbulence there in the flowing steam and also there could be a pressure drop. So, from this point to this point there could be a pressure drop because this point we have sufficient pressure and this point is basically obstructing the steam flow. So, there will be definitely a pressure drop. Now, this steam is getting heated up locally. So, the local temperature around this zone around this zone will go up temperature go up. And because of that and steam is steam can oxidize iron and this particular pipes let us say it is chromium containing iron uh, chromium containing steel which actually gives a good amount of oxidation resistance. But if the temperature goes beyond the operation temperature range then there could be excessive oxidation. So, that oxidation would lead to let us say local oxidation is taking place that would lead to decrease in the metallic component of the wall. See outside is also getting oxidized definitely. So, that means if you see this wall thickness which is actually holding the load that reduces and high pressure zone is created here around this zone. So, that high pressure can give a huge amount of stress on top of this particular wall. And since we are actually reducing the wall thickness which holds the load, so there could be possibility of deformation of that wall. So, that is what the bulging happens. So, you can have a bulging like, like this and here also bulging happens. Okay. At the same time if that stress becomes critical beyond the fracture load of that thin segment of the wall then there could be a blast as well as there could be a crack formation and then crack will grow and then there could be even that 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 is what you have this fist mouth failure this is called fist mouth. So, this fist mouth failure when it happens there could be splinters and that splinters can hit the side by pipes also and like that way there could be a failure from one end to the another, another end and once there is a failure of course, your heat transfer process will be hindered and in fact, sometimes the blast can be so severe it can also hit the walls of that chamber and there could be damage to the refractory lining. So, that time in fact, you have to stop that operation and there could be repair. So, good amount of time will be spent as well as money. So, that is what this local hot spots are dangerous from the point of effective heat transfer operation. 
So, and this is related to excessive oxidation, thermal fatigue. Thermal fatigue means for example, this particular segment is having high temperature, temperature is high, let us say close to that segment the temperature is low and there could be local expansion and that local expansion can lead to a thermal fatigue. Okay. So, that can also lead to a failure and of course, the bulging can happen because the steam movement is hindered because of some reason and the one reason could be if excessive oxidation happens. So, this oxide can spall off and then deposit at the bottom. So, this is the oxide deposit and those deposit will reduce the orifice dimension. Okay. So, the total pathways for the steam flow will be low and that would again lead to a pressure drop. So, that means, this end will be having high pressure, this end will be having uh, low pressure because of the steam not flowing properly. That would lead to all those subsequent processes and finally, we have fish mouth failure in the heat exchanger. Okay. So, uh, this is one problem which can happen, even hot spot can lead to stress corrosion cracking. Okay. So, that is also possible. Stress corrosion cracking due to hot spots. So, we have to avoid hot spots that means, all the time we should maintain the flow, we should in case if it is needed, we need to have a better uh, materials which can have a better oxidation resistance as well as proper parameter control like the hot gases temperature should be within a range, it should not go up. The steam flow rate should be always maintained. In case if we see that there is a pressure drop, we should have a little extra pressure from inlet, so that that debris can just go out. Okay. So, those possibilities are there, that means process control should be properly monitored, otherwise this fish mouth failure can happen. Now, eighth point, we should uh, design to exclude Air. One example we have already cited that electronic items when it is packed, it is sealed properly, so that no more air can go in. It sometimes we actually do a little bit of evacuation, so that air goes out and when air goes out, you are actually removing oxygen. So, what you are doing oxygen you are taking out and oxygen is a serious oxidant and it can participate in the presence of moisture, this cathodic reaction and this is a strong cathodic reaction. So, once there is a strong cathodic reaction and if there is moisture, then definitely the metallic component, let us say iron can go into a corrosion mode. Okay. So, the corrosion of iron can happen. Okay. So, if you take care of it, you remove air so, you are removing, you are reducing the partial pressure of oxygen, you can avoid corrosion factor or corrosion effect. Now, sometimes in some metals like titanium or stainless steel, in case of stainless steel or titanium, presence of oxygen can be helpful. So, the character of this particular titanium and stainless steel, so they are passivating metal. And actually in oxygen presence and H2O or rather I would say active passive metal. So, that case oxygen can help to achieve passivity. So, we have discussed this in greater details in our previous lecture series. So, we can just quickly discuss that, see if we talk about 
E versus log I plot, which is coming from mixed potential theory. So, this is my this is the typical behavior of the metal if it shows active passive behavior. Now, let us say the cathodic reaction is here fine, this is the cathodic reaction. and this is basically coming from anodic polarization. Which is metal let us say stainless steel iron or chromium mainly. So, there if we consider iron 2 E equal to Fe plus plus iron can also show active passive behavior. Now, generalized if we can put it in a generalized fashion let us say m minus n e equal to m n plus and this cathodic reaction let us say oxygen reduction. Okay. So, that time so this is also showing anodic cathodic polarization. Now, that time this is my I cot if the cathodic polarization line cuts the active passive metal in the active zone, but if we add oxygen adding extra. So, that means partial pressure of oxygen goes up. So, this point can go up here. So, this point can go to this because higher the partial pressure of oxygen higher would be the potential or the equilibrium potential. So, the equilibrium potential would change and then it can cut here. So, this is the second level of polarization after having higher partial pressure of oxygen. So, that polarization happens it actually cuts the active passive metal in the active zone and then my corrosion current density would be I cor here. So, let us say this is second, this is 1, this is case 1, this is case 2. Now, you could see that since this is in log scale, so that means once you have oxidant presence as or partial pressure of oxygen if it is if it increases. So, then equilibrium potential would go up because my equilibrium potential can be given as So, this is sorry this is 4 O H minus ok. Now, this is if you fix the temperature as well as pressure this is fixed all those parameters are fixed. So, if you so this is let us say uh, pure. So, it can be considered as 1 if you uh, fix O H minus ion concentration that is also fixed. So, if you increase this definitely this value goes up. So, that is what there is a potential increase or the equilibrium potential increase. So, this is the effective this is the equilibrium potential uh, this is the equilibrium potential fine and you are seeing that the passivation is achieved. So, the material would corrode according to this cathode current density lower the current density lower would be the corrosion rate. And if you do polarization behavior you will see the typical polarization behavior in the first case and here another information is I core second case which is a passive range passive it is much less than I core type 1 or the case 1 which is active. 
So, this way you can actually improve the corrosion resistance of those materials which are active passive behavior, but otherwise in case of active material definitely if we reduce the oxygen partial pressure or if you exclude air it will reduce the corrosion rate. So, that can also be explained. So, if you consider active metal again E versus log i plot you can do. So, this is my active metal it does not show any active passive behavior and let us say this is the cathodic polarization line. and this is the anodic polarization line metal dissolution. So, this is my corrosion rate I core 1 where partial pressure oxygen is high, but if you reduce it this potential would go down and it can come here okay, and you will have another polarization. So, now you see because of the reduction of partial pressure. So, this would be my I got 2 when PO2 is less. So, I got 2 PO2 less is less than less than I got 1 PO2 high. So, this is the explanation and I was talking about the polarization plot. If you are interested you will see the polarization plot for this it would be like this and the second case it would be like this and here it would be first case first case would be it will be like this and the second case would be second case would be like this. So, this will be the pattern of polarization behavior right. So, now Excluding air would be helpful in case of active metal, but excluding having little air or oxygen can be helpful for active passive metal. Now, ninth point is any sort of heterogeneity that should be avoided. Like if we consider inhomogeneous alloy a component with inhomogeneity composition and homogeneity that can have pitting susceptibility susceptibility all those if you see this particular plate those inhomogeneous points can lead to pitting and if there is tensile component it can lead to stress corrosion cracking. Or SCC. Now, we have already talked about stress inhomogeneity. We have talked about galvanic inhomogeneity, we have talked about heat inhomogeneity, okay. in fact we can also talk about oxygen partial pressure. inhomogeneity. At times of what happens let us see some section if that section gets a less amount of oxygen you are going to create high degree of concentration cell. So, the low oxygen place can have higher anodic tendency and this is related to concentration cell. So, this is a typical for example, if some places we are seeing crevice, if there is accessibility of sending air 
if we send air actually crevice corrosion can be prevented to a great extent. What we are doing we are actually avoiding or replenishing oxygen there. The crevice when crevice attack happens one of the initial start point is the depletion of oxygen from the crevice point. And once depletion of oxygen happens in the crevice point for example, if you have a crevice like this. Okay, so, this is let us say crevice. In the beginning everywhere you will have equal amount of oxygen reduction, but if it is a stagnant solid okay, and that stagnant so, sorry if it is a stagnant liquid let us say stagnant NaCl solution. Then this particular part this particular segment will have less oxygen after some time because whatever oxygen was there in the beginning those actually got consumed because of cathodic reaction. So, this is stagnant the condition we have to also mention the stagnant NaCl solution. Okay. So, when we have that initially everywhere same oxygen, but as the reaction is going on oxygen will be depleted in the crevice portion less oxygen. So, this particular away from crevice high oxygen and if we consider these two points this will be anode this would be cathode. As we have seen in the previous case if we have high oxygen if, if we take this reaction let us say this particular Nernst equation high oxygen means this particular potential would be high low oxygen means this potential would be low. So, this will have a low potential and this will be having high potential. What happens other places we have sufficient oxygen. So, in order to meet the requirement of electron for this oxygen reduction again the oxygen reduction is same as in neutral solution. Iron would dissolve here and there will be a dip or a sharp inward corrosion of iron and so this is typically the crevice formation and of course the chlorine iron will also take part in the process in the first class we talked about that chlorine ion effect. Now, if we actually start this particular solution if we star this particular solution the stagnancy would be out and then this is exposed to the open air oxygen will oxygen containing air will go to this particular crevice portion and once oxygen goes there. So, everywhere you have similar level of oxygen crevice can be stopped. Okay. So, that is the purpose of writing this oxygen partial pressure in homogeneity we should not have which can lead to crevice actually. Okay. So, crevice can be avoided if we have similar oxygen partial pressure in the liquid even in the crevice zone. So, this is about removal of heterogeneity we have talked about galvanic we have talked about heat heterogeneity inhomogeneity stress inhomogeneity and we will talk more uh, on those kind of things by giving several such design examples. And the tenth, so tenth is about site location, okay. the site location or we can say that uh, uh, place to install. Okay whether it is a plant or whether it is warehouse, war, warehouse or whether it is a kind of uh, a design of equipment. We should take care that if there is air flow and whenever air flow happens there could be possibility of this particulate matter that is also coming along with the air. Sometimes that air flow can take 
the hot gas is coming out from chimney and that can hit the, the another chimney if the height of those two chimneys are different. For one typical example, let us say we are designing a chimney. So, this is one chimney and hot gases is coming out and air flow is this direction. Now, if another chimney is designed very close to that with a higher height, so this is coming out. So, this particular chimneys, the gases which are coming out, those are hot gases along with several suspended particles. So, so those particles are heating here and this particular part of the chimney, this particular part of the chimney can go into a severe corrosion process or erosion corrosion all those effects can be felt there. So, the better design would be if see air flow we cannot change. So, only thing we can change is instead of making different height we can make them same height. So, air flow is going like this. So, the minimum interaction of those air flow coming with the, the gases which are coming out from the chimney there is a minimum interaction of that gases with the other chimney. So, this is the better design and this is a bad design. So, this is one such example. Similarly, let us say a C site okay, and air flow. So, if there is air flow as well as the something is close to the C site, we should not keep we should not keep storing materials or instruments uh, which are getting access to the sea water. That means, when sea site is there, the air and if it is a strong air flow, then the air flow can actually take some of the some of the small small droplets, sea water droplets along with it, and that can depose it onto those materials. So, for example, if there is a sea sea site and air flow is this and if we are having a room like this let us say ok. So, now if you try to store something here ok. Now, definitely this particular region can have lot of salt water deposit and definitely those can go into a severe atmospheric corrosion. So, the site location is basically to avoid atmospheric corrosion. Of course, or erosion corrosion. So, those kind of corrosion aspect can be avoided. Now, if we see that we have talked about around 10 guidelines and these 10 guidelines were taken from the book by Fontana and Green. There is a book named Corrosion Engineering. At the same time, I have taken help from another book which is written by Professor UK Chatterjee, Professor S. K. Bose and Professor S. K. Roy. Those are former professors uh, in the Department of Meteorological and Materials Engineering IIT Kharagpur. So, they have written a book uh, on corrosion. So, I have taken uh, some part from that particular book also and of course, there is one more source material which is basically ASM handbook volume 13 A. So, if you follow those books definitely uh, you will get to this particular part more uh, better I would say better understanding will be developed. But if you see in a uh, uh, in a short that these are the some guidelines which can prevent you prevent corrosion to a great extent and those guidelines are based on the design criteria ok. So, let me uh, close here, but in the next class onwards I will show some typical photographic evidence of better design. So, till then, thank you.